service discovery for Kubernetes, App Engine, and Compute Engine. Let's get into understanding about uh, what is the service discovery. Uh, the main concept came here uh, from Spring Cloud, and that was uh, the Netflix implementation. Uh, if you want to understand more about how, uh, you know, initial days or a uh, few years back, how the service discovery was happening, okay? So you can go ahead and understand more on the Spring Cloud. That is the best source of information you can uh, think of. Uh, you can go to uh, may maybe, uh, you know, Udemy or uh, any other learning platform or YouTube and understand what is Spring Cloud. And that's where you will implement each and everything that is required uh, for you to deploy your microservices like application uh, into into your platform okay so spring cloud it is uh, is the best way to learn uh, all the concepts related to service discovery and how you can implement it but coming back to uh, the syllabus of this particular uh, certification let's go ahead and get into understand more about why uh, there is a service discovery and how we are going to use it. So if you look at, uh, we saw there is a microservices architecture, right? And uh, there are uh, microservices which are running. Uh, we may have one particular microservice running for say passenger management or billing. I'm just, I just took this example from the web. Or we may have multiple instances running for these services in the backend, right? If you look at uh, the advantage of having a cloud, uh, or deployment onto the cloud, that's where you can take uh, uh, the advantage of uh, scaling, auto-scaling uh, concept from cloud because you can virtually uh, or practically utilize the whole uh, public cloud platform for your, uh, uh, you know, implementation for your applications. So look at, uh, you know, this particular, as an example, passenger management or say passenger web UI, right? If this particular service needs multiple instances, right? Based on demand and it can go up and go down based on the need, how the consumer of this particular application will find like API gateway, how this API gateway will find uh, the individual services like passenger management if there are multiple instances pinned off how it can discover those multiple instances. And that is, you can think of how you can discover a service, right? Uh, there are multiple ways you can implement this. And nowadays there are much more mature platforms. I just gave you example of Spring Cloud. Uh, you can go down and understand how you can, uh, you know, implement hardcore your service discovery server and you can write a clients and how individual service can self-register it. Uh, looking at actual codes and understanding the core concept. But here we are not going deep dive, uh, not taking any deep dive uh, into service discovery, but understanding high level thoughts around it. So if you look at service discovery as a function, uh, what it provides, it, it actually makes services searchable into service discovery. You can have self-registration. So sir, whenever services are coming up, as an example, whenever there are multiple instances running for uh, passenger management uh, microservice, it can register themselves. Uh, self deregister if at all those instances are, are not required because uh, the requirement is met and no, there is no more requirement of having say 15 or 20 instances. It can go off and at the same time while going it off, uh, it can deregister themselves because uh, those in services will not be available afterwards. So it, it should be able to deregister themselves and much more like routing mechanism inside it. So that is all um, provided by the service discovery as a core concept or core construct. Uh, in GCP, uh, you have multiple ways you can uh, do a service discovery. Uh, the basic and the foundation for us to do is, uh, you can have an instance metadata. Whenever the instances are coming up, uh, you can use GCP APIs to get the metadata, understand the metadata, and then uh, provide, uh, you know, identify which instances are having a specific type of metadata and then forward the request to that particular metadata. You can think of that is a high level understanding about uh, or high level uh, kind of searchable functionality you have it, but at the same time you can have even project metadata which uh, using which you can, um, you know, search uh, resources across multiple projects. 
uh, the standard way you can think of, which is used by a DNS proxy, and uh, I guess they use it in um, managed instance group as well, is the DNS proxy, okay? And DNS proxy is much more matured way of providing uh, all the functionality which is provided by the service discovery. Let's go ahead and get some understanding about the Kubernetes because we have to talk about uh, service discovery in the context of Kubernetes app engine and virtual machine instances, right? I'm not going in detail here because this is not a Kubernetes class, but uh, I want to give you enough understanding about how the discovery is happening, okay? So if you look at uh, the Kubernetes, Kubernetes has got pods and the master, I'm just skipping the master right now out, our discussion because we already saw it. Uh, the pods are like, that's where your individual containers are uh, packaged. So uh, one particular pod may have one or multiple containers, okay, of same type or multiple type, and that is, uh, that is dependent on how you orchestrate your pod. So these containers inside the pod share the IP address, and this uh, individual application may have different ports so that whenever someone is trying to access that particular container or the service, it can use that particular port to reach that container. So that is looking at individual unit as a pod. These pods can come and go, like multiple number of pods can come and go based on your need from the customer, right? So if the load on the custom uh, on those pods get increased, then Kubernetes will try to spin up many more uh, pods. If there are not really uh, capacity in the nodes, then it will enhance the nodes or it will add the nodes and then add more pods. So that way it happens like, you know, you have multiple pods running and it is demand-based auto-scaling happening. How you can, you know, how your service, how your consumer for this particular pod, we'll know that there are you know hundred pods running, or oh, I you know there has to be a standard way of routing your uh, request to an individual or particular pod based on the capacity on the pod which is left. So there is a concept of service, and this is an abstraction layer which you have it, and all the service so service has got a namespace in it, and this namespace this service you can think of is a kind of group together all similar pods or same pods, like say uh, the pod which has got a same um, services running in it, right? So that is the service level abstraction and what it is exposed outside is the service IP address. So you can actually think of whenever you uh, your uh, number of pods are getting uh, you know enhanced, there is a logic or the networking inside this will work in a such a way that the request, uh, requests are forwarded to the pods which are active and which can take uh, the request, right? Uh, what happens in say, in case of um, if say pod goes out, right? So the service or the networking here needs to take that pod out or it should not forward any request to that particular pod and that is managed by Kubernetes and that is a kind of service discovery that we have. Typically, if you look at the way it handles is, it uses selectors and selectors, it's not only plain simple, uh, you can mechanism, you can think of mechanism. So it uses labels, so the service uses labels to identify which pod that information has to be sent, right? And it uses selector as an algorithm uh, to which, uh, using which it will forward the request to an individual pods. So from the consumer side, you don't have to implement anything as a service discovery. It is already there and it is already managed, okay? There are definitely multiple ways. You can even have uh, your uh, service having a different uh, uh, metadata also at attached to it and that way you can figure it out, uh, you know, this, uh, or you can think of differentiate different services in it. So discovering services, and this is typically what it is used in Kubernetes. So DNS service watches for new services, create new DNS record for each service, if at all you create a multiple service for different type of pods or different type of services. Services can be resolved in the same namespace. So everywhere for all the pods, you will have the namespace which is same as that of service and that's how it can discover uh, the individual services. 
let's look at uh, how it works in the context of app engine okay we already saw this particular architecture or diagram uh, there is a auto scaling happening at the instance level so you can have multiple instances running for your same application uh, you can have multiple versions running for your same applications right and you can split the traffic and you can do all that canary and all kind of deployment but there is a construct here which is again a service like a kubernetes uh, which abstract your uh, you know here you can configure a splitting of your uh, traffic onto different versions and then uh, for each and every version it has got a different instances on it and service can route the traffic to different instances automatically and this is where you can think of it is an abstraction layer again like a kubernetes and I'm not going in deep here, uh, but I think we'll have some examples uh, and detailed demo uh, in second or subsequent phases of this particular training. But right now, I think the sufficient information for you is the way services, uh, services abstraction layer, which is available for you to, uh, uh, to use it in App Engine. And you can map this similar kind of uh, app, uh, you know, service discovery. It is not a complete or full functionality of service discovery, okay? but it is just high level construct using which you can have a single endpoint and using that particular endpoint you can hit multiple backend instances that's the app engine if you look at the virtual machine and we already saw this um, as a part of uh, you know auto scaling and all that uh, there is a construct called uh, instance group an instance group has got a auto scaling property uh, configured and you can have multiple uh, you know instances running inside the instance group whenever the instance is getting created in say gcp uh, because of auto scaling right additional instance is getting created for the instance group instances has got a prefix of that particular uh, instance group and that's the namespace you can think of the way we have already seen the way it is routing the traffic you can have load balancer and load balancer ultimately talk to or distribute the traffic uh, in the back end and it is intelligent routing uh, so that is what the, you have it but you can have service discovery or you can have the endpoint configured at the load balancer level and that's how it will identify the right back end service and will give you the response right and there are multiple rules you can configure it based on type of uh, content or based on uh, uh, type of uh, like PHP or images or something like that, right? It can distribute your traffic in the back end, but that is in a high level. It is not a detail. You can have instance metadata and we are going to see that in next lecture as well uh, or subsequent lecture, but instance metadata will help you to identify different kind of instances and that is using that instance. You can even discover uh, instance uh, I, a particular instance uh, which you are searching uh, programmatically. Uh, so this is not uh, in detail the way uh, it should be, but this is a high level. Uh, you, you can think of an introduction uh, to the service discovery for on Google Cloud Platform. Uh, if you have in, any questions around this one, I can go in detail, but not in this phase of uh, the training, but in subsequent phase, maybe uh, in June or July, I will have another version or additional videos in which I'll go in detail for the service discovery. Uh, if you have any questions on service discovery, guys, let me know. Otherwise, you can move to the next lecture. Thank you.